Hello again, everyone. Edwin Werner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about astrology and the death of Taylor Kale. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her last name right. But what happened was this is a very bizarre incident. A lot of you may not have even heard about this. I don't know how much notoriety and exposure this got on the news and the internet. It was a fairly popular story. But on uh, April 25th, 2021, happened was uh, Taylor Kale was walking down, I was using the sidewalk, I believe, with a friend. This took place in San Diego, California, and uh, suddenly a, a body had plummeted off a building and had landed on top of her, and that caused her death. I mean, and uh, first thing I want to talk about those, I, well, I want to state is that I want to offer my prayers and condolences to the close friends and family members of this person. I mean, it's not just a bizarre way uh, to pass, but just, I mean, you know, it's something so untimely. This woman was only 29 years old at the time. Her birthday was just, you know, literally coming, you know, up in the near future. And uh, sadly, um, you know, I look at the chart and I found her, her birthday, and I'm going to go to the go to the source on it. There's a, a website called SDCI, it's like SDC or SDCL.org. I guess it's some San Diego uh, website and it, it's had her birthday, it has her birthday listed as May 2nd, 1991. So of course she's a sun in Taurus and her moon is in, uh, her moon is in Sagittarius. Uh, uh, so she, uh, she is something where I'm looking at this, looking at her, uh, looking at her chart again, and the thing, sadly, is we look at this, and her um, her chart was such where I mean, you know, Sun and Taurus, of course, is very it could be very uh, loyal and steadfast. Moon and Sagittarius, a lot of that energy could be going. To, with sports, the outdoors, the things that are Sagittarius uh, related and gave her probably more of an exuberant, enthusiastic nature, more so than the typical sun and uh, sun and Taurus. And I'm sure a lot of that persistent energy, I mean, the sun is about our life and connected with life, I should say, and a lot of that, you know, that Taurus, you know, latent energy, I'm sure went into a lot of Sagittarius activities, not just sports and outdoors, but maybe even religion and uh, philosophy, I'm joking, maybe um, adventures, well, maybe even publishing, it's something we don't right, really know, though, for a fact, but it could, it could have gone in, likely into one or more of those areas I described. The thing that I want to talk about um, stands out, of course I'm talking about your transits, natal placements uh, that might be tied into the sun time and passing. The one thing that stands out is that really of course that transit Uranus being very close proximity to her natal sun. You know, transit Uranus, it seems like it's no joke when it's hitting uh, somebody's sun or it's by their uh, ascendant. And, this is something, uh, I mean, in this case, I mean, this is where I mean, the sun can be connected with the physical body. Yes, the ascendant is what dominates the physical body and appearance, but the sun is, uh, it still has a connection with the, with the physical body. And when your transit Uranus contacts it, that could be something of a very unpredictable or unusual nature that can happen with it. And this was one of the most, uh, Obviously, you talk about an unorthodox or unusual way of passing. This certainly what was that was one of them, and I, I don't know this 100 percent, but this was at least well, it was at least one of the first times, few, at least few times that I've heard of somebody dying in this manner of a, of a body falling on top of them, and uh, it just, I mean, just the timing, of course, was just, I mean. Which is terrible to say the absolute least. And the thing about this too, um, I mean, you talk about I mean, during this transit as well, transit Mercury, 
looks like it was conjunct uh, her natal sun. So that's an indicator of about of news connected with the physical body as well transit sun. Now I had to improvise and do the solar slash sunrise chart for because of course I didn't have the time of birth, but transit sun was in her 12th house in the solar sunrise chart at the time. When you have a transit like that, when you have that transit, that could be an indicator of the life perhaps leaving because the transit sun in the 12th house, the sun is about life, vitality or energy. The 12th house is a, is a house of endings. It's a house, of limit, a house connected with limitations and restrictions. Now, another thing I noticed which stood out is that transit Pluto was conjunct her, um, her midheaven at this time in the solar sunrise chart in Capricorn. Sadly, Capricorn being a very sign connected with things are depressing, despondent. Um, and it's not, you know, surprising me her death was something that gained some kind of notoriety and, uh, and attention and exposure and being in the sign that's connected with status I mean, and recognition. Um, Capricorn itself in transit Pluto was not far from her natal north node at the time of her passing. Now, I know it wasn't conjunct uh, based on the transit orbs that are used, but I mean, when you're looking at you know even five, six degrees away in a, in a transit conjunction, um, I don't think we could say definitively that um, an astrological energy doesn't feel some kind of vibration when it's five or six degrees away from when a transit um, is five or six degrees away from it. And uh, another thing that I'll notice uh, too in her chart is that, I mean, she was also going through her Mars return. She has uh, Mars and Cancer natally. When this occurred, transit Mars was at either at or very close to zero degrees Cancer, which of course is a critical degree. In the solar sunrise chart, she also has Mars conjunct Chiron. Now, Mars could be about physical injury and wounds, and, and Chiron, when it's conjunct Mars, could add to the suffering and anguish. And being in Cancer, zodiac sign Cancer, it wouldn't surprise me if there was some injury sustained to the breast, chest, or stomach area. Chiron in the solar sunrise chart is also very close to the fourth house cusp of the end of life. She also has Jupiter in that four in Leo in the fourth house of the end of life. And Jupiter you know, can enlarge things as I've talked about in previous videos. It can be very paradoxical. Jupiter could be very strongly benign and benevolent, but it could also have the tendency to enlarge and expand. In this case, perhaps it manifested in enlarging and expanding a very dramatic, sadly, attention getting uh, end of life um, for her. She also, well, she has the moon in the um, in uh, Sagittarius based on the solar sunrise time, moon in Sagittarius in the eighth house of death. So that's an indicator of a death that would be public. She was walking, Sagittarius is associated, I would say, with the outdoors, and she was actually, of course, outside when this did occur. Now, um, the ruler of the fourth house is in the eighth house, and conversely, she has the ruler of the eighth house in the fourth house. Well, that tells me, I mean, you're talking about the eighth house being involved in both these examples. Eighth house can be about obliteration and destruction. The fourth house is the latter part of life. And perhaps that was an indicator, sadly, that she wasn't going to have that latter part of life, sadly. Um, another thing um, that I notice as well is her, uh, her uh, transit Mars in Cancer was also making a fairly tight opposition to her natal black moon little in Capricorn. The black moon oils in astrology can be connected with uh, suffering, I would say tribulation, anguish, and uh, Capricorn can also be associated with structures. The man that plummeted 
to his death when he jumped off, he jumped off a building and landed on her. Uh, the fact that Transit Mars was opposing this at this time, well, I perceive this as one way this may have been expressed as the fact that that emergency treatment and care, you know, can, Mars could be connected with emergencies, cancer can be connected with empathy, care um, was not, was going to be far away and may not have been able to get to her in time. She sustained injuries, I mean, the, the, her death did take place fairly shortly after the contact from the man. I don't know if it was instantaneous, but it really, I don't think it was that far from the time when she actually, when, when the man had actually fell on her. Uh, hold on a moment, people. Sorry about that, I'm back, but anyway. And the thing is, um, with her, uh, you know, with her and this, um, this chart, it's just something, again, where we do look at, it's a terrible, you know, sad situation. I noticed, too, she also has her south node in the zodiac sign cancer, very close to her natal chiron in cancer, which, to me, may have been expressed or manifested in really, you know, anything that's connected with the physical wounds and suffering might be more adverse on average compared to the, compared to most charts I would say um, and to me uh, again this is just something you know, that I look at and uh, it's just uh, it's not only you know bizarre it's just very it's very horrific and sad and, and tragic for something like this uh, to happen and the time she was going not just her, through her Mars return but her Saturn return as well and Saturn in the sign of Aquarius which of course is not you know that's Aquarius of course is that bizarre or unusual sign of the zodiac and that in their solar sunrise chart her natal Saturn falls in the 10th house of notoriety, recognition, exposure, and uh, this is just uh, another thing I noticed though, too, in her chart, she also has uh, Uranus conjunct Neptune uh, in the chart in Capricorn, and it tells me that uh, there's something, I mean, Neptune can be connected with filmography, and Uranus can be associated with social media, uh, this was something, you know, that she obviously, I mean, was, this was going, the incident was going to be on the news, um, social media, it would be on social media, um, this is something, uh, you know, on the internet, I'm sure there were videos, if there's videos pertaining to this on the internet, Neptune again is connected to filmography, Uranus could be connected to social media, and Uranus is also connected again with the unusual, the unpredictable, and so, and also something that would be shown you know, through film at some point, not the actual death itself. I don't think there's a video on it, but what I mean is people talking about this on the news. And, and being in Capricorn, uh, the sign associated, I would say, with structures, I mean, this was something, again, that took, that had to do with somebody jumping off a, uh, a building. So there's really not much more uh, to get at in, in terms of uh, transits or, or uh, natal placements that might have been you know, tied, into, tied into her passing. Um, another thing I did notice, though, is that the south node in Sagittarius was really, I mean, pretty, I mean, it had, it's about 10, you know, like 11 degrees from her natal moon. I don't think, I mean, that's a fairly you know, long conjunction, separating conjunction. One may see this as the, you know, the passing of the soul, you know, the, the moon in Sagittarius. One, even though it's not conjunct, it's still 10, about 11 degrees away, maybe 12 degrees away, that 
could be maybe seen as the passing of a soul, the one that was very exuberant, enthusiastic, optimistic, and, you know, perhaps loved the outdoors, was very positive and jocular. But I think it's a little bit too far away from the moon to really see it as that. Anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment. Until next time, people, everyone here to say, stay well.